And welcome back to Aging Well. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb from Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. With me today is Erica Farrell, director of our Age Information Center. Hello again. Hi. So we were talking about the Aging Information Center in the first segment, and I was hoping we could circle back and talk a little bit more about why people call some of the specific issues and challenges that people uh, come to you guys with, because you're this great free community resource. I'm just sort of curious on what the most common topics you hear from people. Yeah, sure. So um, I do think I mentioned this, but um, calling about in-home help is, is one of the really big call topics that we get. Um, people are looking for information about um, homemaking, like you know, having people do chores around the house, um, as well as personal care. Those tend to be two um, really big topics that people call about or end up, um, you know, end up talking with an INR specialist about. Mm -hmm. um, other topics include health insurance. Um, I also talked about Mass Health, but Medicare. Um, that Medicare is a pretty complex system, um, and oftentimes, you know, people transitioning from, you know, an, an employment, uh, an employer pro, um, health insurance program to Medicare, you know, they have a lot of questions about, well, this was covered before, and, and now what will be covered, or what am I going to owe? You know, we do have, you know, people who can talk with, um, talk expertly about those things. So we get people calling about health insurance. We also get people calling about transportation um, as. As people age, you know, some do stop driving, um, and and how to get to and from um, to medical appointments, uh, to the grocery store, um, to the hairdresser. All these become big questions for people. So transportation is also another big big thing people call about. Absolutely. And about how many calls each year do you guys field? So for the last fiscal year, which ended on June thirtieth, um, there were a little over fifty four hundred, and that averages about um, between four hundred and five hundred and fifty calls a month. And are these mostly people, if you have the data, mm -hmm. um, I don't want to spring a pop quiz on you. Are these mostly people who are already clients and they're calling with new concerns? Or are these people who are new to us and really coming to us with new questions? Yeah, I would say there's actually a good mix. I don't have any firm numbers on that. Um, you know, some people, also we get people who may have or previously been involved with one of our programs, so know of us, but maybe haven't been involved with us for several years. We get people calling who are turning, you know, 60, 65. We get those calls pretty fre frequently um, and who may not have known about elder services before. Um, we also get professionals calling. Um, it's a good mix, but I, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to give you any firm numbers that I don't have. <laughs> Absolutely. So we've definitely talked about the information and referral services. Um, and this was something that I actually learned in researching the show, that you have a bunch of other interesting programs that you run out of um, Age Info. And I was kind of hoping we might be able to talk about those a little bit. Yeah, so we, um, we have several programs in the department. Um, I'll just kind of list through them kind of broadly. Mm -hmm. uh, family, there's a family caregiver support program. Um, which seems pretty self-explanatory, but people who are caring for um, older adults or persons with disabilities, um, we have social workers who will work with them directly. Uh, we have a long-term care options counseling program, which is very consumer-driven. Um, we're wanting to make sure that, you know, this is another program for people who are under, you know, 60 or under 65. Um, we want to make sure that they um, know what their options are if, if they have some kind of disability or condition um, that may deteriorate as they get older. Uh, we want to make sure that they know, you know, nursing homes that are available or assisted living options, um, in-home help, you know, about that. And so there's that program. Um, we also have the SHINE program, which, which stands for Serving the Health Insurance Needs of Everyone on Medicare. Um, and that's primarily the health insurance counseling that I've referenced before. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's kind of a catch-all program called Elder Care Advice. Um, and really, we help people with a variety of things um, in that program. So we have, um, you know, some people are clinical social workers, um, and some people aren't. But everybody is trained on those programs as well. And they also cover the INR um, calls. And it, I think that's really informative for both um, everyone involved, really. It sounds like there's kind of a good mix of information and guidance. Mm -hmm. That it's, it's um, and that's, that's good because one without the other, it's kind of like when you have both, you have the whole picture because you guys really are the experts. And when you mentioned that final program, the one about giving advice, um, what was that, elder care? Elder care advice, advice yes. Yeah. Is that sort of under that um, umbrella? Is that sort of what that program does or is it something different? 
It's supposed to, you know, it's also another way to, to work with somebody um, more individually and one-on-one, -on -one, so it takes INR a step further. Um, you know, we can offer people, you know, in the Somerville and Cambridge area, we can offer them a home visit, we can offer them an office visit, or somewhere else in the community, we can meet them, you know, almost anywhere, or we could just talk with them multiple times over the phone. Um, and so it's, it takes it a little bit, you know, beyond the INR, you know, which might just be a one-off, you know, a call that someone might have with a specialist. Mm. Um, these programs, um, you know, an IRR specialist might identify that someone could benefit. They'd assess them for these programs. They'd give them the option, and then they can work directly with one of our social workers one on one, um, just in a more thorough way if if they need that assistance. That's great. Um, and the service area and duration and setting. So yeah. most of these are for Somerville and Cambridge. Yeah, there'd be few exceptions. Um, someone, either the caregiver or our care recipient, would have to be in the Somerville and Cambridge area for that program. But otherwise, it's the Somerville Cambridge area that we serve. All right. Um, and the idea of giving support for caregivers, what, what sort of questions do caregivers call the Age Information Center with? Yeah. Um, so this is also, you know, people do call um, about different things, but I'd say a call that we do get reasonably frequently is, um, you know, maybe there's a caregiver who has been caring for, you know, a husband or spouse um, uh, for some time, and maybe they have some form of dementia and it's all been okay, um, they've managed it so far, and then um, the progression of the disease suddenly they're seeing new new behaviors that they don't know how to manage um, as a caregiver. And so we get that call a lot, like, you know, somebody might be calling and saying, you know, um, so-and-so has started wandering and I'm not sure how to, how to handle this and make sure that this person is safe, um, or that maybe they've started yelling or being repetitive, um, which is something that you'll see with Alzheimer's or dementia sometimes. Um, and so that's what caregivers might call about, and in which case we might describe the caregiver program and, and explain how, how that program might be useful working with a social worker one-on-one. Um, -on -one. We might also give them other resources that they could access, um, you know, Alzheimer's Association, obviously, if it's um, an Alzheimer's or related dementia, or, you know, some other community resource that they might want to access as a caregiver. It's such a great resource. It's like you, you basically have access to all the things that we have, and then you're knowledgeable about sort of the whole um, landscape of, of external services. Um, I can tell you in doing the outreach for the agency, one of the things that we've settled on as a point where if like, people remember one thing from our presentation, it's basically if you have questions about aging, call the Aging Information Center. Um, and basically they can take you from there. And it definitely, I'm getting that sense and talking with you, that's how it plays out along all these different avenues. One last question on this um, area. Common Medicare cases. I'm just sort of curious, some of the questions that people call up with there, what sort of scenarios are you looking at um, in those instances? Yeah, um, we definitely get, I think I mentioned this, but uh, you know, people who are turning 65 and are eligible um, and just have questions about what it is and, and what their options are, because there are a variety of options. Mm. Um, you know, we also get people who are calling about their Medicare Part D, which is the drug plan um, mm. coverage. Um, you know, sometimes people, uh, you know, have several medications and they have to choose between so many different plans and they need some guidance in terms of, well, what's going to be the best fit for me in my situation. So we get people calling about that coverage um, a lot. Um, and then, you know, gen more general questions about how that might interact with, you know, something like mass health or, or public benefits and savings programs, which, you know, both Medicare and mass health do have. Um, so ways that they can save on, you know, prescription drug costs or the Part B premium, um, you know, we, we provide information about that. Absolutely. Cost would definitely seem to be a factor when dealing with, uh, I think anyone who's dealt with the medical system at all is definitely familiar with that aspect. And you can yeah. provide some guidance on how to proceed, see if there's any options if Absolutely. people are facing pressures with costs. Yes, yes. Oh, that's excellent. Um, any final thoughts you would like to add on the Aging Information Center that I might have neglected to bring up? No, I mean, I think, uh, I think you kind of hit it on the nose by saying that, you know, if you have any kind of question about aging or if you're a younger person, you know, with a disability and have some kind of question, we are, we are the resource for you. Um, and we definitely want to make sure that you are um, accessing the resources that you need to, whether that's through us or through, uh, you know, another, another agency. Erica Farrell, you've been a fabulous guest. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me.